According to Harvard, there's 10 Excel functions you need to know, but here's the twist, many of these aren't what you'd expect. Let's break them down and I'll show you how to actually use them with examples. First up is pay special, which isn't really a function, but rather a useful Excel tool. So suppose we have a financial statement like this and we wanna extract the revenue and the net income. So you might think of just taking the net income, control C to copy, and then control V to paste. The problem is we get all zeros and the reason for that, if we double click over here, is because it's a function. So this top part was calculating from the EBIT minus the taxes, but here we obviously don't have the same data right above. So we need to find another way to paste. Let me go back here and what we'll do instead is go to this paste area on the top left and go for the paste special options. Within it, you'll notice we have a ton of different options. In our case, we could just say, hey, paste the values and you'll notice we'll only get the numbers. And you can download this Excel file for free in the video description if you want to follow along. The shortcut for this pay special is Control alt v there, and you'll notice we have a ton of different options, not just on how to format, but also on some other things down below. For instance, for this bottom part, let's say I select this whole net income area, and I want it to be vertical. I can actually do Control alt v and instead of just using the paste options, I can go for the transpose option down here, press on OK, and you'll notice I have the same data laid out vertically. Secondly, we've got adding rows and columns. So here we are again with a financial model, and suppose I want to add a new row in here. The more common way is to select the row just by clicking on it, right click, and going to insert. That said, it is much faster to use the shortcuts, so it's going to be shift space to select a particular row, and control minus to remove one, control shift plus to add one like that. Same thing goes with the columns, so I can select a column just with the mouse, or I can do control space, that's a shortcut there, and control shift plus again to add some, control minus to remove some. Next up, we have the flash fill, which is able to detect some patterns based on our data. So suppose over here we have this text, and we just wanna extract this person's first name, so it would be Alicia, the thing is, Michael is not the same length as Alicia, so you can't just use a formula for this. Instead, you can use the Control e shortcut, that's the shortcut for flash fill, and it's basically able to detect that you're trying to extract that first word in this full text area. If you don't want to use the shortcut, it's the same thing as going over to data and pressing on this button right here. That was just a basic example though, if we look at something a bit more complex over here, like this full text, where suppose I just wanna extract the number, so it's the one, two, two over here. That said, down below, you can see the order is quite different. It starts with the number, and here it ends with the number. Well, we can still use that same control E, and you'll notice it's able to detect the numbers even on these last two rows. In number four, we have the first actual formula, which is the index match. In fact, it's a combination of two formulas, the index and the match put together. So here we're trying to find these sales in the month of February for the country of Portugal. So you might think of just doing something like an X lookup or a V lookup. The problem with these is that they only have one lookup value available. That's for the V lookup. And if I try the X lookup, you'll notice we also only have lookup value in singular. So that's where the index match comes handy as it can filter by more than one type of criteria. So I would first type index, hit the tab key here, the array is basically where are your answers located. We're looking for the sales. So I'm just going to select the whole sales area like that. Comma. The row number. This is where we introduce our first match. It's going to be the row match. So that's all of the different countries over here. The lookup value is we're looking for the country of Portugal. Comma. Lookup array is where can we find Portugal? Well, we can find it within this entire list over here. Comma and we want an exact match for that. Now we just wanna do the same thing for the column area, this time for the month of February. So I'm just gonna select the match function, lookup value is the month of February, comma, and the lookup array is where can we find the month of February, we can find it within this whole list of months, and make sure you don't select that country area, you just start at January, comma, and we want an exact match again. Close the parenthesis, and then we need to close it again for this index part. And hit enter there. Now we have the right data, let's see, for Portugal in the month of February. The number looks correct, and it's fully dynamic, so I can change it to March, and you'll notice how that data updates too. 
moving up to number five, and here we have the sum function, which I think is a bit of an odd choice given how basic it is. That said, I'm gonna show you a more powerful alternative. So suppose we're just looking for the sum of the net income. All we need to do is put the sum function and select all of the net income values. That said, I'm getting an error here because this value right here is also an error. What if we wanted to ignore that error? Well, we can't do anything with the sum function, but there is an alternative, which is the aggregate function. Hit the tab key there, and you can see we have a ton of different functions within it. In our case, we're just looking for the sum. So we'll put a nine in here, comma, and under the options, here's where we can customize it further and say, ignore any error values like that divided by zero error. Hit the tab key there, and I just put a comma, and now we can select that whole net income area as the array. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. So you can see it's able to take the sum and ignore that error value. Next up in number six is one of my personal favorites, but before we dive in, if you're liking this content and you want to learn more, you can also check out our range of courses, which include Excel, Power BI, Finance Evaluation, and more, as well as a range of bundles and career tracks. What makes our courses different is that they're all applied to the real world. So aside from teaching the theory, our courses also offer case studies that simulate the type of work you might be assigned in your day-to-day, -day, ranging from creating a financial model from scratch on Excel, to creating a PL dashboard in Power BI, all the way to making a professional pitch deck presentation in PowerPoint. And if you get stuck along the way, you can easily ask our instructors questions in the discussions area. So if you're interested in checking this out, head over to the link in the description below. All right, now in number six, we have control Y and control Z. These are actually quite basic, but they are very useful. So suppose I have some numbers here, but I actually decide to remove them. Instead of deleting them one by one, I can just press control Z to go backwards or to undo. And then I can do control Y to go forwards and redo. That's basically the same thing as this top area with the undo and the redo here with this arrow. If you really want to undo many steps, you can always click on this drop down and undo as many as you want in here. Next up in number seven, we have duplicates. So suppose in this data set over here, we suspect that there's some duplicate data. One way to find out is with this ID number, it should always be unique. So we'll select all of these in this column and I'm gonna head over to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules when these are duplicate values press on OK, and now we can easily identify all of the duplicates. It looks like there's three main ones. That said, this doesn't actually remove the duplicates, so let me show you how to do that. We just wanna go to the data area instead, and down over here we have this X button, that's the one that we wanna select, and click on Remove Duplicates. Press on OK there, and you'll notice that it's gotten rid of these three duplicates that we had. Press on OK there, and it's all done. Even the conditional formatting has now updated where we have nothing selected as we have no duplicates. Moving up to number eight, and here we have freeze panes. And this makes a lot of sense when you have a large data set where you no longer see the headers up top. If that's the case, what you can do is just click on the area right below the part you want to freeze from. So in this case, we wanna freeze that row number two. All we need to do now is head over to view and click on freeze panes and freeze panes. Now I can scroll down and you'll notice it always remains fixed as that top row. It also applies on this first column. So if I had data to the side, I would also be able to see everything with this first column visible. That makes sense if you have someone's name, for instance, and all of their sales data across several years. Instead of freezing panes though, I think there's a better alternative. So what I would do is first click on this freeze panes and unfreeze them. And all you need to do is press Ctrl T to convert this into a table. Hit on OK. And now as you scroll down, you'll actually notice that the header is update. So we used to have the column ABC. And now that's actually been renamed to the rank, the person name, etc. So without needing to freeze, we can still see all of the headers. In number nine, we have the F4 key, which actually has two different use cases. Let's go over each one. The first reason you might use this is to repeat the previous action. Suppose I want to highlight this number in yellow. I'm just going to do that over here. That's fairly simple. And now instead of doing that same thing again, what we can do is just press the F4 key. That repeats the previous action. It doesn't matter what it is. 
I can do Control B to bolden there, and if I do that same F4 key, you'll notice that it boldens this area too. The other use case of the F4 key, which I think is more sophisticated, is to lock certain values so they don't move around. If I go over here for the tax calculation, it's simply gonna be the price multiplied by the sales tax. That all sounds good there, we hit enter, but you'll notice as we drag this down, we actually get all zeros. And in fact, that's because if I double click on any of these, this whole area is moving down. This one should move down, right? For all the different products that we're pricing. But over here, we want the sales tax to stay on this top part. That's where we use the F4 key. So we need to select this B3 area. That's the red part right here. And just select that and press the F4 key. When you do, it adds all of these dollar signs. The one for the B is in the column, so it doesn't move to the side. And the one on the three is in the row, so it doesn't move up and down, which is more of what we want. So we can actually delete it from the B here and just leave it on the row, so it doesn't move up and down. Hit enter here and just double click. And you'll notice that it now updates. So if I go on this very last one, it's still fixed here, but on this side, it still remains moving. And finally, coming in at number 10 is the feature that I probably use the most, which are the control and the arrows. So when we go in here, just by pressing the control key, we can actually use the arrows in a much faster way. So control down takes me all the way down to the bottom, control up back to the top, control right, control left. And within a certain area like this table over here, control down just takes me to the end of that table. So it's really quite a useful tool. In fact, if we combine it with the shift key, so control shift, down arrow, right arrow, right arrow even more, it basically selects that whole area. So the shift key is gonna select everything, whereas just using the control is gonna navigate only. Now this Harvard article is from back in 2018. So if you want something more relevant for 2025, you should watch this video over here, going over 10 of the most useful functions for this year, or take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.